Uber and Lyft's name have been mentioned with many SA complaints recently, and King County is finally taking a long, hard look at it. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and I want to apologize up front for all the abbreviations that you are about to hear in this video. Unfortunately, as I have learned from many channels, including Tim Pool, Lauren Chen, The Young Turks, all these networks have been pointing out that there are certain words that if you use them, well, you can get not only demonetized, you could get flagged and buried in the YouTube algorithm. CBS News and CNN don't have this restriction apparently, but I do. So on the positive side, when you look at this article, you can see what I'm talking about. You can read what I'm talking about yourself. I have to say SA though. Otherwise, you might never see the video. It might not pop up in your feed. So I'm sorry for the little roundabout dance we have to do. That's just the state of YouTube these days. But anyway, Saddle Times. King County looking at Uber Lyft driver screening after recent SAs. It's like, in the wake of several... Alleged assaults by Uber and Lyft drivers, King County may consider changes to how it regulates the 32,000 licensed ride-hailing drivers in the region. They're not licensed. They don't have a business license. They don't have a limousine license. They're just they're just people turning on their apps. I hate it when they get it wrong in the first sentence. Including possible requiring signage on ride-hailing cars or mandating that Drivers be fingerprinted before licensing. Okay, um, don't agree with the first one. Anyone can buy a sign. Fingerprints, I agree with. I know several colleagues of mine who have publicly disagreed with me on this. You know, that's fine. They have their reasons for thinking it won't do any good. They, they're they probably right. I would just like to see... You know what I'd really like to see? When I say the fingerprinting thing, it would be a more surefire way to catch someone who had committed a serious crime, but it would also force Uber and Lyft to invest in their drivers, thus they might be more invested in keeping them. But, you know, whatever. Currently, both Uber and Lyft run third-party background checks on everybody who applies to drive for them. Those checks, conducted by a company called Checker, search driving records, local, state, and national criminal databases, as well as SO registries, the company said Monday. See what I did? (laughs) You're not going to demonetize this one, YouTube. If a potential driver passes the background check, he or she receives a temporary license while the application is forwarded to the King County Division of Licensing, which reviews the background check before issuing a permanent ride hailing license. So, okay, um, maybe they do things in King County a little differently, and maybe they didn't mess this up in the first uh, sentence. You know, th- this is unfortunately one of the problems with being a general new news sometimes. <laughs> Anyway, if I made a mistake, sorry. (laughs) I'll own up to that one. Um, Anyone with a hit-and-run DUI or similar vehicular offense within the last five years or anyone with an SO cannot get a license. Other past crimes, such as physical violence, fraud, or burglary, are left to the discretion of the Division of Licensing to decide whether they disqualify a potential driver. Both companies also rerun background checks on their drivers at least annually, company representatives said on Monday at the Metropolitan King County Council Committee hearing examining the company's security process. A recent CNN report found that more than 100 Uber drivers nationally have been accused of SA in the last four years. Two weeks ago, a 42-year-old Lyft driver from Everett was charged with indecent liberties of felony and accused of ST, a woman who said she was drunk and had fallen asleep as he gave her a ride home from a Bellevue nightclub. The woman woke up with the driver's hands in her pants, the charging papers say. Quote, the victim was terrified of what the defendant would do since she was isolated in his car, King County prosecutors wrote in court documents. The state is concerned, and my roommate's walking by, I'm sorry, that the defendant may have access to other valuable sorry, vulnerable victims in his capacity as a ride-share driver. Also last month, an Uber and Lyft driver was charged with R in connection with a SA in SeaTac, and prosecutors wrote 
that he was suspected of committing at least five similar SAs since 2014 while driving for the companies. Yeah, this is life on the rideshare platform. Feel safe taking an Uber or Lyft yet? Eh, you probably don't care. Anyway, we're continuing. Early in April, a Tuckwilla man was charged with R accused of posing as an Uber driver to pick up a woman outside a bar in Ballard. During a meeting of the King County's Government Accountability and Oversight Committee on Monday, Councilmember Pete Vaughn Reichbauer, I believe that's how you pronounce it, asked Uber and Lyft representatives about their driver screening policies, saying the drivers were looked at as dependable as a bus driver. Quote, there's a public demand for accountability. Whether we like it or not, these drivers are now part of our transportation network, and we have a role as licensors to make sure they are as reviewed as possible. You know, I'm going to pause here for a moment. I'm going to pause here for a moment, because here's the thing. If in Kings County... See, I have a hard time picturing an Uber X driver having to get a license to do this. It might happen. Maybe they have issued 32,000 licenses. The business license, which I own because it covers an umbrella of my, you know, businesses, whether it be e-commerce or publishing or, heck, ride-sharing, it makes sense for me to have one. Not a lot of Uber drivers I know personally have one. And I know Uber drivers in, um, in Washington, I think King County's in Washington anyway, who do not have this. So... There you have it. I think this, but I think this is Washington because they mentioned the Bellevue nightclub, and that's in that's in Washington. But I don't know anyone who has this thing, so that's one question I have. But here's another question I have. It's a license, right? So you have to sign up on it. Why weren't these questions being asked early on in the process? Why weren't they asked, "Hey, this Uber, this Lyft thing, it's new. This is what it is. This is what they're." selling it as you know did the thought not occur that hey anyone can sign up for this i thought you had to go through some checks and balances some hoops so to speak to get a license for much of anything are they just giving them away to everyone at this point just because they're driving for uber and lyft and now they're all of a sudden looking at this that'd be pretty sad if that's what was going on but you know let's continue Brian Hockaday, List Northwest Public Policy Manager, said the company has launched a new continuous background check program that will provide Lyft with daily monitoring of its active users and immediate notification of any disqualifying criminal convictions. Of course, I have had people email me and saying that they went through one of these things and like a random parking ticket or something disqualify them from the platform. So, yeah, not exactly, you know, foolproof. Caleb Weaver, who runs public affairs for Uber in 11 western states, said the company has started an ad campaign to teach customers about the safety measures included in the app. Those include a button that calls 911 from the app and the ability to share real-time location information with friends and family, which that latter feature is actually very, very cool, in my opinion. Weaver said that using the app's features and verifying a driver's name, vehicle, and identity through the app is the best way to ensure safety. I agree. Drivers aren't required to display any sort of Uber or Lyft decal or signage on their cars, although many do. And it wouldn't help anyway for reasons I've stated in other videos. Weaver said the company has concerns about potential signage requirements for its cars because it would, quote, encourage riders to look at something other than the app to assess security, which I also agree with because the app has the most definitive information you need on whether or not it's your Uber, the license plate. If you don't have a matching license plate, not the make and model of the car, you know what? Forget it. Don't get in. Um, county law adopted in 2014 allows background checks either by a third-party company, which both companies do, or by fingerprinting, which royal taxi companies do. Quote, why the discrepancy both are doing the same job? I would think we look at the piece of code and determine after review of the data whether one system is safer than the other. So anyway, that's the article. And by the way, it just dawned on me. I'm reading this from the Seattle Times. Of course, it's in Washington. Ugh. So many gaps in this one. <laughs> so many gaps. But you know what? Sometimes you got to show your faults and you got to have a good laugh at them. I'm sure I'll be getting a lot of like snarky comments below. That's fine. Have a field day. I, I give you my blessing. Bottom line, here's the thing. I'm glad King County is looking at this a little bit more closely. I'm glad they're taking essays more seriously. 
because this company's been around for long enough that we should have been talking about this a long time ago. And the fact that we're just getting around to it is pretty pathetic. But I don't think King County's completely off the hook. I think they should have been checking this stuff a long time ago. Uh, Uber's response is still pretty paltry, to be honest. Um, you know, they keep resisting the fingerprinting, which might actually do some good. But I also agree that checking the license plate number on the app and the car, matching it up, that should that should suffice in many cases. But it doesn't for some reason. Anyway, we're going to end it there. Does anyone live there? What do you think about this? Do you agree, disagree? Do you think this is going to do anything? I'd love to know. So, comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas is getting you down, check out the GetUpside app. It's totally free, but you will get cash back on every gas purchase. Check out the Afterprinter Vlogs channel. There's new content going up every week. And if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare drivers, we might even be making fun of a lot of the gas in this video there. Check us out on Facebook, the Aptrepreneur Hangouts. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.